Here's today's First Word Daily Devotion. It's June the 26th, and we turn to 2 Kings 16 and 17, but I want you to see this right away in 2 Kings chapter 17, beginning at verse 7, we have a summary of the condition of the hearts of the people in the book of Kings. Listen to it. And this occurred because the people of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the customs of the nations whom the Lord drove out before the people of Israel, and in the customs that the kings of Israel had practiced. And the people of Israel did secretly against the Lord their God things that were not right. They built for themselves high places in all their towns from watchtower to fortified city. They set up for themselves pillars and ashram on every high hill and under every green tree. And there they made offerings on all the high places as the nations did whom whom the Lord carried away before them. And they did wicked things provoking the Lord to anger. And they served idols of which the Lord had said to them, You shall not do this. Now here's grace. Here we come. Verse 13. Yet the Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes in accordance with all the law that I commanded your fathers that I sent you by my servant the prophets. In other words, notice that he is not silent. The Lord here sees as well as he's going to act. Let's continue to read. But they would not listen but were stubborn, as their fathers had been, who did not believe in the Lord their God. They despised his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and the warnings that he gave them. They went after false idols and became false, and they followed the nations that were around them, concerning whom the Lord had commanded them that they should not be like them. And they abandoned all the commandments of the Lord their God and made for themselves metal images of two calves. And they made an Asherah and worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal, And they burned their sons and their daughters as offerings, used divination and omens, sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. None was left but the tribe of Judah. But then look at what happens next. Verse 19, Judah also did not keep the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the customs that Israel had introduced. And so in other words, the people have, that's a summary statement of the condition of the hearts of the people. They have neglected, remember the terms of the Exodus, they have neglected the salvation of the Lord. Look at verse, look at verse 20, let's see, let's look at verse 28. So one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and lived in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. And still there is this God who is constant, he sees, he knows, and he decides to act. Look at verse 29. Every nation still made gods of its own, put them in the shrines and the high places that the Samaritans had made, every nation in the cities which they lived. Look at verse 33. So they feared the Lord, but they also served their own gods after the manner of the nations from among whom they had been carried away. Now remember, in other words, God had delivered them, but they choose instead to neglect his salvation. Look at verse 34. To this day they do according to the formal manner. They don't fear the Lord. They don't follow the statutes or rules of the commandment of the Lord God, the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. And so in other words, they have divided affections. And here's what divided affections always means. Divided affections means judgment. Look at verse 40. However, they would not listen, but they did according to their former manner. So these nations feared the Lord and also served their carved images. Their children, here's the kicker, here's this just a sad case. Their children did likewise, and their children's children, as their fathers did, so they do to this day. In other words, this is a reversal of the Shema, remember? That they are to love the Lord their God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, and teach this to their children and to their children's children. And so instead, we have a reversal of the Shema. And of course, that's going to bring disaster or mean disaster on the people. Now let's go into Acts chapter 26. Remember, we're continuing to look at the end of Acts. And at the end of Acts, we're going to see Paul in a particular place and in a particular setting. But we're fast approaching Acts 28 as we look today at Acts 26. And look at verse 6. Of course, Paul is, uh, is before King Agrippa. He's made his appeal, or he's going to make his appeal. 
And then look at what he says here at verse 6. And now I stand here on trial. Why is Paul on trial? Because of my hope and the promise made by God to our fathers, to which our twelve tribes hope to obtain, as they earnestly worship night and day. And for this hope I am accused by the Jews, O king. Why is it thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? And so why is Paul on trial? Paul is on trial because he is preaching Christ according to the scriptures. Look at verse 22. To this day I have had the help that comes from God. And so I stand here testifying both small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would come to pass. And what did they say would come to pass? That the Christ must suffer and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. Look at verse 27. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. And Agrippa said to Paul, In a short time, would you persuade me to be a Christian? And Paul said, Whether short or long, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am, except for these chains. Now let's see what happens. Then the king arose, and the governor and Bernice, and those who were sitting with him, and when they had withdrawn, they said to one another, This man is doing nothing deserving death or imprisonment. Now look at this verse 32. This 32 maybe is haunting. And Agrippa said to Festus, This man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. And so we may read that at first blush, and we may say, My goodness, uh, here is this Paul. If he had not appealed to Caesar, was that a mistake? Well, no, because Paul was led by the Holy Spirit. Philippians 4.22, we're going to get a glimpse of this. Philippians 4.22, Paul sends greeting to the Philippian church, but he also says those in Caesar's household send you greeting. And how would those in Caesar's household ever have heard of Jesus if not for the Apostle Paul? And so we have that hope that even though what may seem troubling to us, indeed is fulfilling the plan and purpose of God. Now, Psalm 145 is very special. I hope that you'll enjoy it as you read it. Notice we have a little note here that says it's an acrostic poem, each verse beginning with the successive letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And you've been through Psalm 119, so now you know all the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. But I want you to notice verse 1 and 2, and this is where we'll end our time today. I will extol you my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. And then look at this language in verse 2. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. You know, we call this the first word daily devotion, and we are looking at the Bible reading the everyday English Standard Version, the everyday Bible of the English Standard Version. We are reading the Bible every day, so that we will live out Psalm 145, verse 2. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. How do you begin to praise the Lord forever and ever? Well, you can start today.